Venison is one of my favorite things to eat. Um, Angel's got a lot of recipes, as do I, that we just, we really enjoy with venison. I and mean, we fill our freezer up as much as we can, whether we're eating at home, uh, cooking for friends, or we're bringing it to deer camps, or wherever it may be, you know, venison is just, a, it's a favorite of ours. And I'm amazed at how many people I talk to that don't like venison are like, ooh, I don't want to eat venison. And I'm like, man, you've, you've just, you've either, number one, never had it properly prepared, or number two, hadn't had it properly taken care of in the field, or number three, you've never really ate it. Because if you've ate it and you've had, had it taken care of in the field and properly prepared, I mean, it's just awesome to eat. It, the first thing about it is it begins in the field. You know, if you get an animal that's been wounded and tracked for a long periods of time, uh, or it's warm outside, and, and yeah, the meat may not be as good. It's still going to be good. You're still going to enjoy the meal, but maybe you process it a little different. A lot of times in, in early season, if I've got a buck I've taken with uh, with my bow, I may turn that one all into hamburger. Conversely, if I take a doe later in the year and it's good and cold, we got a good a quick kill, I may make that all into steaks. I'm kind of always in my mind thinking about the best, you know, what happened with this deer, how old it was, how it was harvested, how fast it was recovered, what's the weather. I pay attention to a lot of that to ensure that, you know, I'm really using the meat to the best of its ability. I've got a few key things that, you know, are, are mandatory to me. I want to, first off, recover every animal we shoot as fast and humanely as possible. Secondly, I want to field dress it and cool it down as fast as humanly possible. Um, by that, we're going to get it back and we're going to field dress it in the field or back at the camp as fast as we can and we're gonna to begin to cool it down and age it. I think that cooling down and aging process is really a important one when it comes to you know, taking care of that meat. If you're one of those guys that sit around and on the back of the truck and pose with the deer and it's 80 degrees out there for hours on end, I mean, first off, you need to be slapped because you're not taking advantage of the best part of that meat. You're, you're basically wasting a lot of it. I, I'm just a believer in that meat is equally as important as showing off those antlers. So let's get it cooled down, get it taken care of, and show proper respect to it. After we've gotten all of that done and it's taken care of, the processing part of it, I mean, I've got buddies of mine that process every little ounce of meat down to the last little piece that they can, and they've got the time to do it, and they've got some awesome recipes, and I've got other people that take it to processors to get that done. Regardless of which way you go, think about the end use now as you're getting in that process. Do you like hamburger meat? Do you like pan sauces? Do you like it spicy or not spicy? Do you want more steaks? Do you like jerky? Uh, do you like cold smoked sausage? How do you want your back straps? Butterflied, butterflied with, with uh, bacon wrapped around them? Do you want your tenderloins whole? What about your hams? What about the shoulders? What about the neck? You know, are you making some stew meat? Are you making chili meat? What, I mean, what are you doing with that meat? Because I mean, the list is endless. So think about some of your favorite meals. Think about how your family likes it. Think about what you're gonna do with that deer, even before you get it, if you can, and then have that plan in place so as you're getting it processed, you can get the most benefit out of it. Then, once you get ready to start cooking it, man, there's a million different ways that you can cook it. I mean, we love chicken fried venison. That's one of our favorites, but smoking it. I'm talking, when you, when you start trying to smoke venison, and all the different ways that you can do it. You know, I, I love it wrapped in bacon with some cream cheese and some jalapenos in there. I also like it just as a straight piece of tenderloin or back strap where you cut it into little steaks and you, and you, and you just put it in there and you're letting that smoke come out and you, and you eat it exactly like that. You know, and I like it cut up into little hors d'oeuvres. I mean, you can take a piece and, and dice it up into little pieces with cheese and put it out for a football game or the main course, whatever it may be. I mean, it's just always gonna be good that way. And then finally, I mean, well, let's see, you can make it into soups and stews and roasts. And I'm, like I said, the list is endless. So when it comes to venison, take care of it in the field, have a good plan, whether you process it or somebody else processes it, think about all the cuts, think about the proper ways to cook it. Don't overcook it, don't get it too hot, and if you do get it too hot, don't let it cook too long. But I promise you, venison is one of those things that if you, if you don't like it, you've just never had it prepared properly.